Hi. I recently did an interview with um, Zach Cross, who is our junior designer in residence. Zach just recently graduated from Temple University. He's a very energetic young designer, but he doesn't have any experience in Rhino, Grasshopper, um, or our, the tools that we're coming out with soon called Land Kit. Um, so this interview is uh, in three parts. It's um, talking about topo kit, paving kit, and planting kit. Each of these is um, specific to a different whole area of landscape architecture. And I think it's a great intro for anyone who's curious about land kit or about rhino or grasshopper. So enjoy. Let's just think about a typical planting workflow. Generally, you have a bunch of analysis, maybe, if you're lucky, to look at what is what is the sunshade. You do some sunshade studies. You think about where is, where is the soil wet or dry. Maybe you understand the soil texture, you, like, okay, what's what's fine or rough. Um, or maybe you know, maybe you know something about the organic matter of that soil. Um, you might do a slope analysis if you have the right tools. You might do kind of an elevation analysis if you have the right tools. Um, and then and then you have all of your list of species, right? You know, you have like the lists that your firm uses um, generally. And you say, eh, well, these seem like good ones. We used them on the last project. We'll use them here. Um, and there's a lot of firms that, you know, dive in a lot more on every single project than that. Like, I'm not saying that's everyone. Um, but that, just with given budgets and everything, that's that's what happens, understandably. So what we wanted to do was was take a, make a tool that took all of the complexity of all of this, the, the complexity of plants you don't know, the complexity of, of an environment that you can't understand completely in your head all at once, with all these different analysis layers, and, and, and have the computer hold some of that in its head so you can make these higher level decisions. Just like with TopoKit, where it's, it's, like it's dealing with all the, all the mumbo jumbo stuff uh, and you're kind of focused on like, where do I want this wall? Does it look too high? You know, et cetera. So here, um, th these plants are being generated. This is, this is just like, these are called pseudo plants. And pseudo plants are our way of saying, given some just random parameters, create some create some hypothetical plants, right? So we could we could refresh this. I'll so just plug it in again to another. I just plug that in again, and it refreshes um, and gives me a whole new out uh, layout of plants, as well as a new palette. So it's a new palette and a new layout. So where is that layout coming from? Well, basically, each plant gets a pseudo niche as well. So that niche is based off of, in this case, I'm just pulling the elevation data out of out of the, the landscape, and I'll, I'll show you how I'm doing that. And I basically, I say, what are the ranges of elevation? And create some sort of just randomized ranges within that. And build a niche object that then gets added when we build our plant, when we create a plant. So here we have a plant library of like eight species. And then those plants get plugged in and filled into areas that we're, we're pulling from the, from the model. So if I come down here, so I'm pulling off of this floor layer. So it's grabbing these, these boundaries here just from the Rhino Rhino file, just like we were with some of the other the other um, plugins, you know, with Topo Kit and Paving Kit, um, and it's creating again, just like with paving, it's creating planting areas, and we're adding plants to that area. But we can do it using constraints. So, given the niche of the plant and the um, analysis that we've done of the environment, which I haven't shown you yet, um, it will place plants where they are allowed to go, right? So if it says this plant can only be, be between 300 and 305, 
if it lands on 308, it's not going to draw the plant there, right? It's it, it's just it's going to try to draw plants in the areas that they um, that they belong, and also tries to coordinate them a little bit so that they're not overlapping one another, um, and and to do self spacing. So each plant has its own self spacing. And is it, is it based on the um, mature growth of the plant or? That's all in terms, you can change the data that you want to put into the plant to build the plant. So this, these pseudo plant parameters that we're, we're creating in the beginning, those are just random, right? Um, and you could, there are ways of building your own plants. And we actually have an example file, which is on landkit.landow, or landkit.design, sorry. Um, and, and that it's sort of, it's actually called real plants. <laughs> and it's, it's where you can actually build your own. Um, but we actually have a better way of dealing with real plants now, um, which I'm, I'll show you in a minute. But okay. so how do we get that analysis? Well, we create an environment. Um, we get a, a boundary. So if I go and plan, um, this boundary is getting pulled off of a layer. This this green outline is getting pulled off a layer, and um, and we're doing two layers of analysis. We're doing the slope analysis and elevation analysis. And those are uh, so so the way we do it is we just build the environment. It needs the boundary, which is I showed you, cell size, which we've said five feet here. Every five feet, you know in a square, a grid, analyze the environment. And then we have a topography, which is a, a key part of the different um, analysis tools that we have going on right now. It's, it's like, how, how do you, what are we analyzing exactly? Well, mostly it's the terrain, you know, mostly it's sort of like, yeah, different aspects of the terrain. So to get an elevation layer, all we do is just say, oh, add an elevation layer. <laughs> just Environment in, environment out, and same with slope. Environment in, environment out. And then we can we can take that and we can pull out the data and visualize it, right? So, so this just pulls out the locations and the values and does a little bit of math to create a color from the values and then and then draws draws that map just to visualize it. And and this is less important other than being able to really visualize what the conditions are and, and understand it intuitively. Cause I, I think it's, it's important for this not to be a, for this to not be a black box. We don't want this to be a black box. We want land kit to be uh, an open sort of ecosystem. You know, it's not open source, but it's, it's open enough that you can understand what you're doing and the decisions you're making. And sort of, if I change this, it's going to change that it's going to change that. And it's a way to keep track of the decisions you're making. So in this case, we're making a decision that elevation data and slope data are important. That's what we're, that's what we're, how we're analyzing the environment. And we can also do, um, uh, we can create a, a feature proximity map. So we can say like how close to a given thing, an object or how close to a path, right? Um, so let, let's say you wanted to make sure that, that there's this certain plant that is not salt tolerant, is not anywhere near a path, which is going to be salted all winter. Right? Uh -huh. So, so that, that's, that's one uh, way to think about that. So, so the, the, these values, these, these elevation values are in, are in this um, object, and then they get manifest in planting. Because we've we've chosen elevation as a as our you know um, as our constraint, we can actually do slope as well, or instead, uh, right? When you when you say uh, when you put those components in, they say like elevation layer. Is that creating a layer in the layers panel, or is this a different? Uh, oh, no, no, it's not. No, no that, that's good. That's a good point. So no, it's we're it's called an analysis layer. At least that's what we're calling it. And that exists within the environment. And the environment exists purely right now in Grasshopper. 
and we're going to have a way we we're working on a way to save plants and we're working on a way to save environments as as like files so you could do you could like analyze a big complex environment and then and then be able to load that file instead of having to run rerun the analysis all the time if if it's like a heavy slow thing right or or, okay. or if you want to like take snapshots of the environment um, over time. So, so there's other fun computational things that people who do computational design will be able to do with this. They'll be able to like animate things and automate things and, and generate 28 options or 200 options, you know, by, by kind of ch just changing parameters, um, with a slider. Um, cool. So, so yeah, so this, this spits out, these are our pseudo plants and those get added and then they just get pulled out and visualized. But we also have, um, we also have the ability to bring in real plants, quote unquote, real plants. So, um, there's a database called the ERA database, which, um, takes, uh, a number of different factors and pulls them together. A lot of it is, is ecological. Um, it's the eco regional revegetation application. It's, it's, uh, I think done by the Highway Commission, and uh, the guy Mark Skinner, who really worked on that database, is actually working with us on a project down in Alabama to um, do some computational planting design um, using these tools and, and these kind of these strategies. Um, but basically, we're, we're pulling in this data into the the this component. This is a CSV file. It's just like, it's like an Excel sheet, but in a simpler, in a kind of almost like a text format. Um, there's about there's about six thousand plants, and that not all of the data is complete for all of all of the plants, but it, it will allow you to say, hey, I you know given uh, certain con uh, constraints like distribution within the U.S. being in PA or the plant type being a herbaceous perennial, and the pollinator value being high grab all of those plants, right? And so I can say, um, grab me 30 of those plants at random, and it gets me 30 plants that that have those values from that database. Right? Okay, cool. I can also unplug the 30. Um, I you just hold control to unplug. Um, and it will get me... Oh, it's automatically getting me 10 because I'm saying random is true. So I can make random false. Um, and uh, so if you don't provide a number and random is false, it's automatically going to grab all 135 plants that meet that criteria from, from the database. So right now our planting palette is not necessarily 135, but it is a, a lot. So it automatically generates a kind of like a... Uh, schedule and a spreadsheet that you can actually export to your own CSV file. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, um, and then you could nice. you could bring that into Excel to kind of analyze. You know what is it generating? This is I, so. This is a way of exploring the design, right? This is a way of trying to understand the environment and what plants might want to be there. This is not necessarily a way of saying like. You know, not until this tool gets a lot better and, and, and someone using it gets a lot better um, would this tool be a way to sort of say, you know, whatever I'm spitting out, that's the, that's the final design that we're actually going to build. I mean, it's more of a conceptualization and, and you know, exploration tool, but it's, it's hopefully getting people to a more ecologically um, sound decision about what, what, the, what they're planting a lot faster and more directly and more intuitively, right? Thinking, thinking at that higher level, as I was saying before, and not in the weeds of trying to memorize all of these different aspects. aspects. Um, so there's a lot of different plants here. Um, you know, that's why we kind of had, you know, random as true. Um, but every time it runs, it's going to run a different, um, a different set of plants. And you can see how they're all, they get placed automatically. Um, using this kind of smart fill. Uh, we can analyze the environment. Oh, that looks like it. Only had a few plants that worked. 
Um, we can analyze the environment at a given point. So this, you know, here the soil texture is coarse, the soil moisture is none, and the sun exposure is seven. And those are some of the variables that we're using to place these plants. So I'm, I'm actually applying soil moisture and soil texture. So what, once you have all that data, that data is in the database, and you can just say, uh, just apply that as a niche.